Welcome back YouTube. And I know I've thrown a lot of videos at you over the past, uh, you know, day or so, but I had a good day to get everything knocked out at one time. So I don't mean to bombard you, but what I want to do now is talk a little bit to you about body armor for training, for use, for everything essentially. So, you know, clearly nobody's going to walk around in public in body armor or really shouldn't for that matter, but having it in your vehicle or having it at your household, if the most terrible of things is to ever happen, then that makes sense and you should have it. As long as you can afford it, know how to wear it, know how to use it, know what it's for, and can operate with it on. You shouldn't own body armor and not train with it on because then you don't know how it feels to be on and how you have to manipulate your body and do certain things. You can't just bend over at the hips if you got body armor on usually because it's gonna interfere with your midsection. You have to be strong enough in your legs to be able to lower your body down to one knee and come back up out of it with everything on it. Just so many things kind of play a factor. But what I'm gonna do right now is run through what my plate carrier armor setup looks like. Um, so here it goes. Oh, she is not light. So here it is. So essentially, I have a shellback rampage plate carrier. The standard shellback rampage plate carrier uh, comes with a cummerbunds that are about you know four or five inches wide, and they have elastic. And I'm not really a big elastic fan. Um, I forget what brand these uh, chicken straps are, but they're buckled, so I don't have to remove my entire front uh, mag carrier, like fold up the Velcro to be able to put my uh, plate carrier on. Essentially, unbuckle one buckle, throw it over my my head and my shoulder. Buckle that one up and I'm going. Or I can have them both undone and throw it over the top and come back at it. But it's just, I usually unbuckle one, toss it, and go. Um, so that's why the chicken straps are there instead of a cummerbund. Now you do have to, you know, these have no stretch to them, so they're going to lock in super tight. So if you go too tight, it's going to restrict your, you know, your breathing uh, and your lower body or your uh, lower torso movements. So you need to be a good comfort zone of where they're at. All right, so let's go on the front here. So what I have up front is my S-TAC uh, Kiwi 3 mag carrier. Uh, the retention on these are great. Um, since I can pick up a, almost the whole thing when it's on, I mean, it holds a full magazine, just perfectly fine. You can tip upside down. And I have the, uh, I can't remember if these are the mid, I know they're not the lows, they might be the mid height. Mid height ones, so they're not overexposed. Um, the mid, the low height ones are meant more for like a, a range belt, war belt, what have you. For these, you need to have them in there retained pretty well because, you know, if you got to crawl around, jump around, do all kinds of things, you don't want these falling out. Um, now, always, I got my PVC American flag here so everybody knows who in the world I, you know, what force I'm fighting and who I'm representing. Um, in the event, like, stuff's going on in Ukraine, got to identify yourself. You don't want to be shot by your buddy because you look like somebody else or trying to impersonate. So, at least, maybe, possibly, my fellow Americans won't shoot me with that flag on there. Um, to note, my... Uh, Kiwi system here does mount to the embedded buckle that's on here, so I can detach this and attach other other items, or go to their standard uh, carrier that they uh, flat carrier that they send with it, um, just to re remove some weight if I'm wanting to do some more like uh, functional fitness training with the vest. Because um, y'all can see my name now, you know who in the world I really am. Um, find me if you want to; it's fine. Um, and then a lot of people are going to be like. Three percenter, huh? That's up there at the top. Well, if you don't know about the three percenter and what that means to be a three percenter, um, you should probably go and look that up. I'm not going to sit here and go into a whole video about it, um, but there's plenty of material about what a three percenter is, and most two alphas fit a fit a majority of those uh, that indoctrinated thought process. Um, a lot of it just goes around protecting your community, stand up for others, be the be the, uh, the sheep dog, not the wolf for the sheep. Um, that's just a, a quick rundown. So um, give a look into it. If you really want some information about it, you know, go to their website. They have charters all over the, all over the area or all over the country. If you'd like to go to a meeting, they have those uh, uh, rather often. Um, so look into that. Now I represent my T-Rex arms over here with that PVC pa uh, patch. It's just kind of cool. Um, he makes really good products. I know people give him a lot of flack because he's never served in military or law enforcement, but he runs around shooting guns because 
you know, he's a, a well-off individual with the heart, with a, a, a really high drive. Um, but Lucas over at T-Rex Arms um, definitely has some shooting ability. And anybody that says he doesn't is ignorant to it. Um, now, whether it can be applied in a combat scenario, I believe so. Um, you know, as Mike Tyson said, everybody's got a plan until you get punched in the mouth. Well, you know, a lot of veterans will say everybody's got a plan until you get shot at. I'm fortunate enough to never been shot at, but I like to think that I could respond. So I guess I'm in the same boat as Lucas there that since I've never been shot at, can I shoot back or would I shoot back? I think I would. Um, anyway, let's go forward in the video. The Rampage also has these uh, uh, very slim, you know, very thin straps over here. They're reinforced with, I assume, I assume Kydex on the inside or some type of polymer. Uh, that's just so it doesn't interfere with your buttstock on your rifle whenever you're firing it. Um, does have the pads in there, the uh, sweat deals on the on the inside of the whole thing, so it absorbs and breathes pretty well. Pretty well. You're still going to get hot in this thing. As you can tell, this looks very thick. That's because the plates I have in it. I have uh, RMA plates inside here. They're about an inch and two, inch and two thirds thick. Um, they're Kevlar outside and steel inside, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it's been a long time since I've had them out of there. Um, but essentially, they're heavy, they're thick, but they're gonna protect me when I, when I need to be protected. Um, on the back here, um, I do have a Condor, uh, which is a very inexpensive brand, but it's, it's, it works, okay? But it's a Condor hydration pack. I don't have my hydration bladder in here right now, but it also doubles as a uh, multi-use bag. So if I needed to load some things up in here to take, you know, if I was doing some training and I needed to put some stuff in here, I mean, this got a good uh, pouch to it that would secure plenty of stuff. Like if I need to put some goodies in there, whatever I need to put, I mean, it it expand out. It's got a frontier or uh, frontal pouch on it as well. But I mean, namesake for it, it is a hydration pack, but I keep it on there for that. And then um, I do have another pa uh, pouch because it just makes this thing look so huge when I have everything on it. Um, I have a full med pouch that comes back here uh, that mounts to the Molly. Um, it's got all sorts of stuff in it to include like scissors, um, of course, all the blood clotting materials, two tourniquets, uh, pull straps if, that way you got if you got to drag your buddy. Um, it's got all kinds of things in that in that other pouch. But then we get to talking about this thing expands. We got out to here with bladder, and then we got out to here with that pouch. It just makes it huge. Then I also have a, a large general purpose shell back pouch that uh, goes out. It can either be mounted above up here where this flag's at, but then it interferes with the magazines. So typically when I put that on there, I put it on the front part of the magazines. Um, but then that again sticks my, you know, my, my midsection out even further. So then going prone becomes an, an, not even a thing. So Right now I have it in like my slickest setup minus having the mag carriers on there and the most function. I mean, if I needed to grab this and go, this would be how I would grab it and go. If I had time to prepare, yes, I'd weave in my med kit and yes, I'd weave in my GP pouch, have all my good, have those goodies up front. Um, my reflectors uh, for, for, you know, signaling to others. Just the other goodies that I have loaded up inside that. I can do a video about that later on if anybody else, anybody would like to see that. But it's just stuff that I think I might need if I was on more of a longer journey, so to speak, with my plate carrier. Um, but this, I use it on a regular basis training, uh, whether it be at the range, shooting with it. I also use it uh, as a home workout because this thing probably weighs 45 pounds, I would say, all put together, maybe a little more with loaded magazines and everything included. Uh, if I put the hydration and the med, med pack on there and the GP, it's probably in the 60 pound range. So it adds a good amount of weight to your upper body. Clearly it's not like squatting 225 or, or more. If you're just gung-ho enough to do that. Um, but it adds enough to your body weight that it, it affects you. So training with it on is imperative if you're going to ever plan to possibly need it. And then I had an I saw that there. Just realized I had an old IR flag on there, just to let the guys in the sky know that there's a that there's a friendly on the on the bottom. So maybe they won't blow my butt to smithereens if Russia or China ever gets froggy enough to come over here and see what it's like in America. That's no no bit of challenge, but 
I can tell you the Chinese populace is not armed to the tooth, but there's a, I think it's like a 85 85% 85 of Americans own a firearm legally. <laughs> I'd say well into the 90s own them, whether legally or illegally. Um, and we may butt heads all the time and say things about our fellow Americans that, you know, sounds crazy. But I guarantee you, if someone decided to invade this nation, we'd work together. I really honestly believe that, and I hope that to be true. Um, so I'll just leave this video on this. Um, respect your, you know, your everyone that's an American. I mean, everyone in general, but respect your fellow countrymen, whether they're black, white, Hispanic, anything. Everyone should get the same level of respect until that respect has been uh, been fringed upon. Um, so if you've been disrespected, I'm not saying an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, but um, I'm the type that if you disrespect me, you're going to get a different version of me. Um, you always have my respect. I'll treat everybody the same until I feel I've been disrespected, and then I'm going to tell you all about it. Um, so I think we'd be a better society if we would all operate that way. Not everything's about race. Not everything's about gender. Um, a lot of people have said, I'll, I'll, I'll judge you on your, on your character well before your color. And that's what I do. So if you act in a high character, you're going to be in high, high spirits with me. Uh, if you uh, act in poor character, then not so much. So just be good to your fellow Americans. Um, remember, we're all in this together. Um, things are getting... A little more lax when it comes to the the COVID and all that all that stuff that we lived through for the past two years, but we have bigger fish to fry in this nation, and it's going to get continually more difficult to fry those fish and more expensive to fry those fish, so to speak, um, or to drive your car for that matter, because that's pretty stinking expensive right now too. Um, so, just like I've said in all my other videos, remember those that you elect are there to represent you and what you believe in. Uh, hold them accountable, stay in their ear. If they're not doing what you what they said when they won your uh, vote or won your support, then tell them about it. They're public officials. They don't have to listen, but if enough people say something to them, they're gonna realize that they're gonna lose their position if they don't listen. So uh, stay in their ear, stay in their rear, stay in everything they have until they start representing you to the way that you believe that they should. Um, because they're not there, also they're not just there to represent you, they're there to represent the good for the American people, have our interest at heart. Um, if they're not doing that, then they shouldn't be there. That's my opinion, but honestly, if they don't have our best interest at heart, then why should they be there? It shouldn't be about their pocketbooks, it should be about us having the best American life that we possibly can. Um, that's why so many people want to come to this country is because we have a lifestyle that they can't fathom. Um, so I'll leave it with that. Uh, stay trained, stay healthy, keep up the good fight, and I'll see you on the next video.